The enemy fade thinks we are afraid. She's right. That shit is scary. <laughs> the audio cut out at the beginning of the podcast. I'm just going to give a little context to the beginning of this clip. Tania was talking about the recent writer strike. I'm sorry about the inconvenience, but here is the podcast. Enjoy. All sorts of other wonderful works that everyone around the world enjoys. And um, they are actually getting paid less and less and less than even older contracts that they had. Mm -hmm. um meanwhile all these corporations are their ceos are raking in hundreds of millions of dollars a year um and so uh and between that and then the ai coming into the picture um and wanting to get a control over what that is and and how that's used um the writers are on strike and as an actor i i feel that you know we are all very much in the same fight of course, there are things that are specific to writers, just like there are things specific to actors and, mm -hmm. and directors. But um, the fact that pay has gone in reverse for us, um, and you know, AI is threatening to essentially they want to use that, even though it won't be as good, and it will never really be as good as what we do. Um, it is a tool that they want to that you know these corporations want to have at their disposal so that they can create crappy work faster mm -hmm. <laughs> and and in the hopes of maybe uh squeezing a few more cents out of profit so um so as an actor i'm i'm you know standing in solidarity so what that means for the day-to-day -day is that um i figure out like hey when can i when can i go uh, join some of my writer friends uh, and other actors that are on the line and you know uh, maybe shut down a production if we're lucky and also uh, uh, just kind of be there and support mm -hmm. so that's what, one thing yeah what <laughs> i actually i was um i had that written down as something that i wanted to ask you because um, oh yeah as someone that doesn't necessarily like if i just see it i don't necessarily know what's going on because i'm not in sure in that and um you did a very good job of explaining but also what what is something that like people who aren't just like me who yeah. aren't in there what what is something that we could do in support and uh, of the the strike you know that's a great that's a great question i know um you know the writers guild hasn't it's, it's, since it's just the writers guild right now that's on strike it's the actors are we're about to begin negotiations um and so uh right now i think the the way to ex express solidarity is to just really be public about it i think um you know get on your socials talk about how you support the writer strike how you um you know maybe talk about what you might do if you if you know, shows start, you know, they're pulling shows from uh, streaming services so that they don't have to pay people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for the for that show work that they've created. Um, you know, expressing just like, you know, your anger about that is always a good thing. Um, um, you know, I, I think that's probably where, where it is right now is just, you know, using your whatever platform you have, whatever reach you have, whatever voice you have, um, and expressing support in that way. Yeah. And there might be, there might be calls at some point to be like, you know, everybody, you know, unsubscribe to somebody. Yeah. And, um, and that might be a, a thing that like is a tactical thing. Everybody on like this day, we're going to do this. Right. Um, but I think right now, just being really, really vocal about like saying that you do care, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that it's not okay that, you know, the amount of money that they want to pay, uh, one person a year, a third, like just a, a portion of that would be enough to satisfy the, you know, financial demands that a whole union is asking for. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, and that's just part and parcel of the time we're in. I mean, there's so many different industries, 
that are being affected in this way, you know, grocery store workers, fast food workers, uh, we just a few months ago saw the railway workers, you know, teachers, there's, there's so many different industries where um, the people who are working people are being, you know, their labor is being taken, they're being squeezed out so that somebody or some few people at the top can make millions and millions and millions of dollars yeah um and that's just not that's not fair that's not the way it should be people want to be respected yeah absolutely i think that uh, you, what's the could you touch on the end goal of what what the people are wanting to come out of this because i know i i've heard some you know taglines amongst this but i, I want i'm wondering what the the, the the actual headspace of where we want this to to end up to be. You mean like specifically with the writers, or just more broadly speaking, with with yeah, labor with, with, and... with the writers? Um, like what, what? Well, I mean, some of their demands might like uh, just because it might entail explaining how things work. But essentially, like, in, uh, and a lot of folks may not know how people. Uh, get paid in the entertainment industry. Do you want me to get into that too, or uh, yeah, um... whatever, whatever answer you want to give. <laughs> I, I don't mean... want to get too much in the weeds, but essentially, what it is is writers want to be paid fairly, mm -hmm. um, and so right now, you know, it you know, like for instance, for a, a television writer, there used to be uh, if you were working on a TV show, that TV show would have but on TV would be would be like maybe 20 plus episodes in a season and that would take a good portion of the year right and so that is a that's the job right and you would get paid for that and then when they would re-air that on television you would get what's called a residual payment yeah. so that every time the company is making money off of the show the people who participated in creating that show um also get paid now not everybody you know participates in that and that's a that's a problem but like this is how historically this is how historically through labor actions and through unions coming together and saying we're not, you know and essentially striking they've been able to get payments for like you know uh for writers and directors and actors um to get these residual payments because there are many years so for instance you're working for one year and then you may not be working for a number of years and yet that uh, essentially that corporation is making money off of what you've made um, and so that's where residual payments come in and a lot of people uh, have depended on those payments um, and and that sort of has been the model but once things move to streaming uh, they're like this is a new thing and we don't know how to do this so then they stop doing that um and so now uh it doesn't matter if something is a massive hit on a netflix or an apple or amazon prime uh or a paramount plus or wherever mm -hmm. um they can just play it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again and, and uh they can put ads on it which more of them are trying to do now and get more subscribers and they never have to pay anything besides that one time you showed up mm -hmm. um so that's the pay aspect of it. That's one aspect of the pay aspect. There's also like those seasons, those episodes are much shorter now, right? Like you don't have 20, you have like, you know, 10, eight, 12 episodes in a season, right? And so, um, but then holding you exclusively for, and some of these are actor issues, some of these are writer issues. Um, there's exclusivity issues. Um, but anyway, like the, the, the model of pay is such that you know, instead of it being, okay, so I've, I've made something, it's insanely popular. I will now, I used to be able to get paid for that. If the more popular it was, the more they'd air it. And then the more I would be able to participate in that. Now that's gone. Mm -hmm. And it's not, and these kind of jobs are not like, um, you're scrounging to get those kinds of jobs, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like, Oh, once you have that job, that's what you're making forever. That's yeah. what you're making when you're working. Yeah. So you have so that's why this residual structure was fought so hard for so many years ago. 
And that's why uh, uh, we're fighting for that now. Yeah. Um, and then when it comes to AI, you know, these guys want to be like, you know, we'll just chat GPT the script and we'll just AI this actor and we'll just AI this voice, right? And, you know, uh, and that way we'll just be able, that's, that's sort of the, you know, grand vision of it um, for them. Um, and uh, that's just, you know, that's unacceptable for us. Yeah. 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 So I, I mean, I, I agree with everything. I think that it's, it's really important to be vocal about it. It's really important to um, have people understand. And I think that um, the questions that a lot of people have are like from a normal, um, someone who's not in the industry. I think you did a, a fantastic job explaining that. Oh, story. thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do, I do want to uh, touch on a few other things as yeah. well. Um, I, uh, so you, you've been in, like, were you, you were in house, right? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. I, I yeah. was in that show. Yeah. I, had, I did one episode of it. Yeah. Is it, what, what did you do? Were you like a, like a patient that came in or? No, I was, I was a school teacher, um, who was taking like a high, like some high school kids to, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was like a planetarium or something. Mm -hmm. They had it set up like it was very, very cool the set that that they created that day. Um, and so, um, and then you know, I'm like I'm like sort of the boring high school teacher who's lecturing on blah blah blah. And um, and you know, there's like a couple kids in the back, like they're they're drinking from a thermos, and you know, and then one of them gets fucked up. <laughs> House. <laughs> Uh, and so that's 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 uh, what happened and i'm like oh my god no <laughs> nobody's I, fucked up except i'm a high school teacher and i don't say fucked up because it's house but you know you get the idea i get the idea yeah. <laughs> well because you there i so i was looking at your imdb and yeah uh, you do oh uh, you were in gray's anatomy yeah yeah um like ncis new orleans oh yeah yeah and there was another one that I really was. Oh, ER. Oh yeah. So yeah, 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 that there is like there is a a theme of like uh of doing those those gigs that maybe are like an episode where you know the the premise is almost the same like they the, the occupational. Um, Oh right, like kind of an uh, procedural, occupational procedural. Yeah, and then yeah, they have frequent like just one episode characters. Yeah, um, and those, but do you? Th those are all fantastic shows, and ones that I enjoy. And I, I was like, what about like Grey's Anatomy? How was that experience? That's like a phenomenon that everyone. I mean, the show has been on for ever. And, oh my gosh it's been on for a long time yeah, yeah. and how, how was that for you was was that that was a lot of fun yeah 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 it was a lot of fun i did it was two i was doing two episodes for that one nice. and i was playing uh the older brother of one of like one of the doctors that, that's on the show mm -hmm. <clears throat> and and I, I was like a lawyer and he had gotten in trouble with us. I, I was basically like big brothering, mm. like throwing my my lawyer weight around to be like you know big brother. And it was it was a lot of fun, you know, on that on those two episodes. Uh, in each episode, there was one of the castmates, uh, like one of the series regulars, was directing that episode. So it was really fun uh, on that level because you know they're they are coming at it from th that perspective as an actor on the set and. Um, and they're easy to, you know, they're easy to talk to, and they, we're speaking the same actory language, and um, and like you know, the 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 folks that I worked with were were great. It was just a really really fun time, mm -hmm. yeah. And so when when it comes to like, uh, like getting into voiceover, 
Because you, yeah. you've been, I feel like, I'm, I'm just going to scroll down. You've been yeah, acting yeah. since, what, like 2001 is your first credited IMDb credit? Um, yeah, but I assume yeah. I mean, bef I've been... before that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like I started, I, I started professionally working in, in 99. And then, and I think one of the things, a couple of the things that I did in 99 came out like in 2000 or 2001 or whatever. Um, and so, but yeah, like I moved, I'd moved to New York, uh, to start working and I did a lot of theater at, and, and when I moved there as well. Um, and so, yeah, and I didn't get into voice acting until about 10 years after that, and about, uh, end of 2008 is when I started doing an audio book. And in 2009 is when I signed, like I started working with my voiceover agent. Mm -hmm. So about 10 years later, um, and, uh, and yeah, that, that's opened up a whole other avenue of, to my career. You, you know, I got into voiceover originally, um, because it was just an avenue where it was frankly really difficult to get roles, um, you know, as a brown South Asian guy who looked who you know like i was i was fitting into a certain type that at the time it was like uh it wasn't what they were looking for when they were looking for for when you when you read like you know south asian guy or indian guy or whatever they they weren't necessarily looking for for my type so the kinds of so the roles that i ended up getting um were it, on the one hand, it was really great um, in that they were sort of written broad, like they could be anybody. Mm -hmm. um, but it also, it was a little bit of a bottleneck. So I was, you know, and then I'd heard of voiceover, but it was just one of those things where it was like, I think a lot of people, even today, when people ask me, how do you get into voiceover? I, I hear it's just a real small community. And it both is and it isn't, mm -hmm. you know, it's... Um, it is in the sense that like, yeah, you, you see a lot of the people that you work with again and again. And, and it isn't because I know there's like a whole ton of people that do this work that I, I don't know who they are. And, and when I hear their work, I'm, they're amazing. So it's like, of course it's a universe out there. Um, so, uh, so it was really like a way for me to expand what I could do because I was like, uh, you know, they're just listening to my voice. So I'm not necessarily being hindered, like judged and hindered mm -hmm. uh, and X'd out based on my, you know, race or ethnicity. Um, and so, so yeah, that's how I got into it. And I started actually doing audiobooks. Um, that was my first thing in I was doing, I did an audiobook, and then that, I, the first audiobook I did kind of blew me up into the audiobook world because like it was a it was like an amazing book so I was lucky to be able to work on something like that mm -hmm. and then and then I got recognized for it uh and so that kind of opened up a lot of opportunities in that world and then simultaneously a friend of mine actually <laughs> the friend you may know he plays uh Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat 11 um, I don't know if you're an MK11 fan, um, but he, uh, so we've been friends that long and he was like, you got to get into voiceover. And I was like, all right, his name is Matt King, uh, Matthew Yang King. And, um, and so I was like, so, so then I kind of got, I was like, introduce me to your agent. Let's see what we can make happen. Um, and, and then that, that process started to happen. And so then I started to. Uh, after some hook and crook, I got in, I, I was able to get that meeting and, you know, kind of show what I could do and, uh, start working with them and, and they're a fantastic agent. I've been working with them ever since. Are you, were you a video game guy before Do you play any, you know, it's funny. So like I, so when I grew up, like I had no, no, didn't really have video games. Like I didn't have a console. Um, at one point we had this computer um, and it, there was like loaded on it were like these super generic versions 
of video games. So there was like a really generic Space Invaders game uh, that was on this on this console. So I had that. Um, this and this was like by the time I was in high school. So meanwhile, everybody else, by the way, had everything. I had I had, I had nothing. Um, but like in. I started then, you know, the, the game like in college by the time I started and uh, after college, I loved like I just just all the time playing N64, like GoldenEye. Like that was mm. that was it. That was it. So, you know, um, I ended up getting like a used console <laughs> at one point. It was like a long time. It was many years ago. I got a used console and just played the crap down out of uh, out of GoldenEye. And then I think I played like one game on like an old Xbox. Like true crime streets of LA. That's what it was called. I played that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the thing is, it sucks my, all my energy, all my time, all of my waking thoughts, all of my sleeping thoughts, like everything, it would just, I would just be obsessed and in the world. And so then, and, and not get anything else done. So then I was like, I don't think I can, I don't think I can do this again. <laughs> but I mean, I have played some of my games. I definitely, uh, when I was, I did the very first video game that I did was uh, Halo Reach as a voice actor. Mm. And so, um, and I joked around with those guys, like, you know, you should have me, you should send me the console and the game so that, you know, I could, I could publicize your little game. It's so nobody's going to know about it otherwise. <laughs> so you should send it to me. And, um, and then they sent it to me for my birthday. Aww. <laughs> Um, so I, I had a blast doing like, I'm inside. So that was very trippy. Cause that was the, like that. I heard myself, like, I was like, oh my God, I remember, I remember making, uh, like, there was a lot of lines, obviously, uh, the, so much of it was written down. And then they gave us a chance to like, Hey, so, you know, you want to make some stuff up, go have fun. <laughs> well, and there were a couple of things that I was like, oh yeah, I remember doing that. Um, uh, but it was, you know, that was a lot of fun, and it was very cool because that character is such a, such like a tough badass guy, and and I was like geeking out playing this game, like, oh, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I but I I just I think back to because like my first moments of of gaming are when my my older I have three older brothers and pretty far away from like my closest brother that's to me is six years so i i was like much oh, yeah. younger and then that's like my younger brother yeah mm -hmm. seven years and i i would only get to play if someone didn't show up to, to right. play with them <laughs> right 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 they needed someone and i got put with the best player so it was like the best and worst player on a team but i remember like halo um and then like other games but like like when I speak to a voice actor that has been in that like a franchise or something that I that's meant so much to me, I just think it's so cool that I that I grew up on it. And now we're having this full circle moment where I'm I'm talking <laughs> to someone who worked on Halo. I mean, you worked on Mortal Kombat and and just these cool projects that that are just so fascinating to me. And I I, I feel so lucky to to just be able to to kind of have that little moment of my childhood to to speak with someone who, who's done really cool things so i appreciate it you're welcome yeah uh, i mean but it's it's not only that that like, is that's pretty fun that's pretty that that's always a, a great moment to meet somebody i remember the first time so like there was this um animated show i just loved i was obsessed with it um and uh i remember one day i was in a booth like we were just doing like a, a gig and um the show was uh oh my god i gotta look up i gotta his You're name good. is i'm gonna look up his name because i know his first name but i want to i want to i want to do his full name here ba, 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 ba. yeah there it is okay um, so, so the show was called Robotech. Have you ever heard of this? It's like not. an anime show. Um, I mean, it's before your time because. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, 
but anyway, it was in the eighties, and uh, they took like this anime with this completely different like story, and then they rewrote. They took the animation, and then they just rewrote the story uh, for the American audiences. And and I love the show. And there was one of these characters, uh, Max Sterling, and he's played by this actor, Cam Clark. And uh, one day I'm in a booth doing uh, Star Wars, The Clone Wars. It's this, uh, like the, not the one that, not the recent one. This is the one like from a little while back. Uh, and we're like doing this thing together. We're in the booth together. We're like fellows, you know, <laughs> like we're acting yeah. together. Mm -hmm. And all I can do is like, like I'm trying so hard not to just completely geek out because I'm like, I, I know you, I know your voice. Your mm -hmm. voice has lived in my head. Like, mm -hmm. oh my God. Um, and he's just like, hey man, yeah, cool. What's up? How's it going? Like, so totally anyway, that's so, I get it. That's awesome. I yeah. I mean, there there is something about the, these moments in life, especially when when you work in a certain industry where you have that opportunity to to meet people who just you're you're infatuated with you you followed for so long, you're big fans of, and I think there there's a specific moment because I've had it before where people don't live up to the hype. Oh where, yes, yeah. There's yeah, a lot say, of don't people. Don't meet your heroes. Yeah. Which has happened to me, but on the contrary, I have met people who have exceeded my expectations and just like, wow, everything that I thought they could be and more, just fantastic. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. And I think a lot, a lot, I've not had a bad voice actor experience. Every voice actor that I've met, I've walked out of there, you know, I've, I've called someone and been like, they were fantastic. They were they're mm. everything I wanted them to be and more. And uh the way that even even to go as far as saying the way that you guys treated me with the the uh the Q and A experience. Oh yeah. I had a, a smile on my face for many, many days after that, just thinking about that. And it was still oh it's my still God. like you guys were so nice to me and so welcoming. And I thought I didn't know how I thought it was going to go, but I don't know if I thought it was going to be that good. Like, I don't think I could have imagined that. So I, I do want to say personally thank you to you and obviously the, the 12 other people that were in the call. But thank you for, for welcoming. Oh, my gosh. That. Hey, thank you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You it was... just came in a superhero moment. And by the way, just to make it clear, in my mind, I was like, this poor, this poor guy, like it's, what is it, four in the morning over there? <laughs> I uh, really, I really, really thought that. I was like, oh my God, it's like, oh, <laughs> I, is his phone just always on? He needs sleep. Oh. When does this guy sleep? Oh my goodness. You know, no. I was I was standing. In... I totally totally thought. You know what it is? I think now I put it together. Now I think I know why. I think it's because when you first reached out to me, you reached out, and then Miranda um, had reached out, and for some reason there was something that she had said because she was like, "Oh, he's really cool. You should you should totally like." And I had just met Miranda at that same time too, and so. For some reason, there was something that she said that made me think you guys knew each other from there, from like, you know. Oh, from, from where she was from? From Australia oh. or something. And because like, and there was, because there was something about family or something, something that was like, not just like, oh, he's like, he's cool, blah, 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 blah. It was like, there was something about like, you know, oh, growing up or family or something that that made me go, oh, so he's like, he's in that part of the world. Okay, great. So we, we, mm -hmm. I really got to figure out like a time when we're going to hang out. Meanwhile, you're like two hours behind. Yeah. I'm curious what she, what she said now that made you think that. Like, I don't know. I'll have to go ahead. But I mean, she's saying your praises to the moon. Like, seriously, she was like, just like, you have to make, make the time. Do so literally, it's just been like, Miranda, <laughs> Owen. 
Why are we gonna have this conversation? Oh man. <laughs> you know, my my mom is a big supporter. She watches a lot of my stuff. Uh and she absolutely adores Miranda. Miranda and oh, Gabe that's awesome. Among other people, but Miranda and Gabe she'll ask me how they're doing all the time. Oh, that's Yeah. <laughs> and so You know it's I I never met any of these people. Never. Oh. Like until that day that we did our group chat. Yeah. Um you know when I did the announcement um Miranda and a few other folks had reached out like it was like hey you know welcome mm -hmm. so that was really cool so we knew we interacted on on the socials but like even then we like that was the first time like seeing animated full like not animated you know, like like yeah. fully human people on a mm -hmm. small box on zoom um yeah so yeah it was, it was it was a really cool day it was i was standing out in my kitchen waiting for dinner to be done and then i was i literally um i got the message i went back in my room and didn't eat, eat, eat anything and just hopped on it and the flow you were amazing oh thank you I, you I really appreciate were it. i appreciate yeah. it so much um so with you've worked with riot twice now for... Mm -hmm. yeah we did league of legends is mm -hmm. when i first started working with them and then almost like in very very quickly afterwards we started working on valorant okay so when it comes to already having done a project with riot was there mm -hmm. was it the same process when it comes to um like did riot come to you afterwards and be like hey this is something that we have in mind or are you back from square one? Oh no i had to audition <laughs> <laughs> yeah i had to audition and the thing is i like listen I, like i get it like they they're trying to find you know a thing for each they weren't like stunt casting with like um getting some kind of marquee level person they were they 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 were trying to find somebody they were trying to find a voice so mm -hmm. um and i had literally just done auction uh for them from league of legends and so um they you know that was part of the conversation once things started to move forward with me um it really was about you know hey listen we want to we want to make sure that we don't that these are two very distinct people. Um, and so, and the one thing that I appreciated was that the, the voice director on the sessions for both Val worked on both Valorant and League of Legends. We, we had worked together on both of those. So, um, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't academic, like, oh, I think it kind of sounds like it could be like, no, 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 I remember this. Or, the, or like we had a shorthand also like oh maybe this is slipping into this let's keep it here um so that was great that was very useful mm -hmm. what were some of the original um kind of bullet points that you got for this character before things really opened up um when it when it comes to valorant for harbor like what are some some yeah. key points that you remember yeah you know the the thing for uh, Harbor was that he was, they, they had described him very much as like, you know, the big brother, the caretaker. Um, uh, he's he, one, one visual they gave me, which uh, immediately gave me a sense of it was the, um, oh God, now I'm, oh my God, I'm blanking on his name. What's Aquaman's name? Um, now your mind get out of here. I literally was about to like just... Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa. Oh, okay. I, they were I, like Jason yeah. Momoa, and I didn't even have to look. I just, I just needed, needed this coffee needs to be like stronger. Clearly, <laughs> um, uh, Jason Momoa from Dune. Mm. Did you see Dune? I have not seen Dune, but I know what you're okay. talking about. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, that's a good, that's a good. That was a really good visual, and a good, um, just 
personality and vibe. I'm like, okay, I, I see that. And these are touchstones, right? These are like, um, like somebody who could really handle himself and, and can do it all by himself. Um, but really is, you know, and, and, and curious, you know, that was the other thing. Cause you know, he goes around, he starts talking about this thing or starts talking about that thing. And, you know, like, I remember the history of blah, blah, blah. Um, and, in, and really enjoying that. Um, but the big one throughout was like, he really takes care of people that are under him. And that's, that's a very, that's a very, you know, specific way when you're starting to look at sort of what they're doing in the story. And, and then once you're doing even all those like call outs that are in video games, you know, that gives you a very, that gives you a touchstone of where you want to go with it. Uh huh. When, when it comes to, um, like finding a voice for a character and mm -hmm. um creating that voice with with a character like harbor I, i'm not i don't know exactly what project but i'm sure you've worked on a project where you know they they want you to specifically just deliver the lines how you like how they're supposed to be and there's not much depth to the character uh he doesn't like you might have like a story or something of why you're there, but like with a character like Harbor, like you're creating this voice and you you have this backstory. There's probably holes in the backstory that maybe you're filling in or something like that. How does that how do those two things like um compare to each other? Like do you do you really enjoy that process of of finding the voice for, for a harbor? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's funny because when you're when you're finding a voice, it's it becomes it's you it's not limited to the voice. So even though like like physically, I'm not Harbor, right? Like mm -hmm. physically, like if in the on camera live action version, like I'm not gonna play Harbor. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but I have to embody that in, I have to mm -hmm. create that in my body yeah, as absolutely. if I could, mm -hmm. as if I am playing Harbor, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, the, 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 when you're doing voice over, when you're, when you're doing that kind of work as an actor, you still, a lot of people kind of get stuck in the voice part of it of that of that line uh and it and the thing is it's you really have to embody it the whole thing the the voiceover part is sort of the um it's just the specificity of that medium so for instance like in theater you know i would be i might move, move like that like i might make a big gesture right or i might be like what's that over there I might point, right? Uh, because I got to reach the back row or whatever, you know? So, uh, whereas in a film, I might just just do that, right? Like that might be a huge thing, just me moving my eyes, just like that, right? And so in voiceover, it's like, how do I do that with my voice? Because you, you can't see this and you can't see that. But I got I to gotta, I gotta create something in my body that comes out in my voice. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. So like um so uh, I guess that's a really long way <laughs> of answering it's the same thing. Like I just go through the same thing. So okay. it like in terms of creating a character, right? So um and then there might and then there are like little things that I do that I I know are specific to voiceover. So like for instance like I don't, I may not physically be Harbor, right? But like, I know that I'm not gonna do Harbor like this. Oh yeah. Right? Like it's gotta be like chest out open, right? Like, you know, excuse me. Whereas like Akshan, uh, you know, Akshan is like, he's he's a built guy too, but he's like a little more sly. He's a little mm. more, right? Um, so, so like my body is going to be doing different things uh in the booth splash closet uh 
um, uh, that and and those things that I do are gonna my voice is gonna come out a certain way, mm-hmm. and that is gonna be part of what you then is experienced by the audience, yeah, right so yeah are are you are you comfortable with giving some uh some harbor voice lines here? Oh my god <laughs> I, I don't mean I'm to put comfortable you with it I'm out of it's like you know putting on a coat. That, that I may have, uh, I, I don't know if I, I'll see if I, you know, lost or gained weight. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, the good yeah, thing, yeah. The good thing for you is I have them, the ones that I want here, so you don't have to. Oh, that. let's bring it. Let's bring it. Um, All right. But I oh, do want to ask. Here we go. What, yeah. Is there one that you get commented often or asked to do often or is your favorite mm, there were a, a, a bunch of favorite ones that i had um and i remember that day we did the um mm-hmm. we did the casting and i was like i don't remember any of these lines and i, <laughs> I went and looked and i was like oh yeah that was a good one <laughs> well that was fun that was fun no man hit me what do we got um i suggest you move all right Let's find, let's find Haba. Haba is, I think he's right here, yeah? Does this sound like Haba? Yeah, I think yeah. he's, he's right over here. I suggest you move. Mm. As, this, the switch on you is crazy. I was, <laughs> I was very, it was very snappy right there. Um, there are some, what, uh, what language, when he's in a different language, what language is he speaking? He was speaking Hindi. Okay. We were doing Hindi, yeah. Um, well, I have, I have one. And we might have thrown in some Punjabi in there, too, I think. Okay. I don't remember if we did. We might have thrown in a little Punjabi. Um, I'm going to... Can you open the chat? And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that. there's one that's... I just copied and pasted this one, so... Um, I'm not exactly sure if it's <laughs> correct, but... Treat yourself to something nice while you still can. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think. Oh, so like the script, I can't, I can't read it in the script. It has to be like phonetically. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Um, Are, like maybe I don't know if I, I did one of those. Or... Um, we'll get, get one more in here. Real quick and then we'll get some other <laughs> stuff in here. Um yeah, I, I put another one in the chat because it's a little bit longer so you so you don't have to remember all of it. Oh <laughs> Gail Gail, you've got a lot of heart. A metaphorical heart. Unless do you have a real heart? That was fantastic. <laughs> that was really great. I do want to say one thing that yeah. I, uh, and this is completely off topic, but I I, re- I just completely remembered. off topic. Yes, from from what what from what just happened. But I want to give you a, I, I want to give you uh, something that I've noticed that I okay you I I love your Instagram when you you post your kids a lot and you guys oh. look like you're having so much fun you look like a fantastic dad so i i appreciate oh, that about you. you and even just the the meeting of uh during the q a i left that with with your energy and just how much of uh, of a genuine person i i had a first impression with so i i really do appreciate that and it, oh, it was it you. was a wonderful meeting and you definitely made a really good impact and and so i i appreciate your just your whole vibe oh and, and thank you so much yeah thank you so much um yeah i i just i always see it and it always makes me smile i got uh obviously I, i'm pretty young right now so i don't i don't have any kids but i'm an uncle so oh um, wow i have four nephews and a niece and um wow yeah a, a big one yeah um but i i just i love i love kids and i i love seeing people who are 
um, just wonderful, wonderful parents. And, um, and I definitely get that vibe from you. So. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the reason for coffee. <laughs> Uh, what, what year or at what age did you, did you have your first kid? If you don't mind me asking. Oh my God, you're going to make me do math. Holy crap. <laughs> um, let's see if you get this right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, we had kids later. So like, so my son, he's 10. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> so I was 37, oh. 36. Yeah. 37. Yeah. It was 37. Oh. So is that, how has that been for you? Like, give me, give me the, the parental, uh, having a kid, how much, what, what changed for you? What changed <laughs> everything? <laughs> um, I'll tell you what. So I never drank tea or coffee. Mm. Like, like it was, I mean, it was like a if you want like because I just always have like a lot of energy and I still uh -huh. I, like I do but like you know if I had like a coffee it'd be like uh oh watch out <laughs> <laughs> right it'd be like oh my god now it's like give me my fucking coffee <laughs> um and it's not even I I'll be honest I don't think it's that bad um mm -hmm. but it is something I joke about and I tell my kids I'm like you can't have coffee till you. I said 38. I'm like, you can't have coffee till you're 38 years old because that's that's when daddy started drinking coffee. <laughs> I do I do um, notice being around children for a little bit. It seems like they kind of siphon your energy out. Uh, I'm definitely tired after. They keep you young, man. Like <laughs> I'll say, like you know, like I, um, you know, because I like have, you know, had kids. I have a 10 year old and a four year old, and you know, having them at what you know. Normally, not normal. Like a lot of people have children at a when they're younger. Mm -hmm. Um. So even though like I've had them at the age you know that I did, it's it 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 definitely is keeps you young. And you know, uh, um, you know, I'm I don't as like single parents on my hats off. To, I mean, like you know, that it's just because with the two with my wife and I, it's like we're we're like we don't know how to help anyone does it um so it really is just like they're angels to be able mm -hmm. to when they're doing it by themselves um and even with us too it's it's a village you know um so yeah and and in terms of and you know we both my wife and i both work we're both professional she's not in the, in the business um she uh, uh is an educational consultant right now um and uh you know so it really is the juggle of like uh you know being very present and and there for our, our kids and also uh doing the thing and and trying to you know do our own careers and support each other in the careers that we're doing um and 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 you know hopefully showing that to our kids too mm -hmm. like you know that uh it's important to do what you do to to do what you do to do it well and to and even though it's hard like uh you you do the things you need to do to do what you love right and to, to do what feeds you and feeds hopefully somebody else like the world like you're you're doing yeah. something that's important you know you're not just um thinking about yourself all the time so Absolutely. yeah that's wonderful you know. i uh i do want to get a couple more voice lines and then we will get you out of here we're about like <laughs> 50 50 minutes here oh my god i live doing lines oh god uh, here we go here we go that's a, that came out different like doing lines with owen is like a very different context this Mom, I, I promise it's not <laughs> and i Jesus. promise it's not what it sounds like <laughs> um what kind of show is this <laughs> uh okay i think they're they're sectioned off i sent oh my three God. okay three in there all right there's three all right all right here we go it's a wonderful science 
Breach. Breach. I got his. He's down here. He's down here. Harbor is right here. Put him right here. Breach. Are breach. Your prosthetics are waterproof, right? Ask him for a friend. <laughs> this is what happens when the goth kid gets nightmare powers. <laughs> Oh, this is what happens when the goth kid gets nightmare powers. Told you. The enemy fade thinks we are afraid. She's right. That shit is scary. <laughs> <laughs> that one's great. Uh, I appreciate My God, it. I totally forgot all of these. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. That's what I do. Oh e everyone God. thinks this is a podcast, but I'm here to remind you guys about your voice line. That's what. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I I appreciate very you good. so very much for for taking my my teetering on very annoying, but also follow up messages. Um, no, 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 no. I I specifically said please, tag, like <laughs> hit me, tag me, like do all this stuff, like because because mm. I'd be like yeah yeah we'll meet, let's do it next week, and then like uh, two months went by. <laughs> so I was like. <laughs> And I, I was like, oh, my God, I, we got to get this. Thing. So thank you for um, absolutely for being so patient. I, I really appreciate that. I really I really just love the the everything that you give off. I, I think that being around you is makes people happier. And um, you have that that it's like a one of a kind thing where I I genuinely feel like after this, I'm going to tell people how how great of a conversation I just had. And um, I'm excited oh to share gosh. it with the world. And I, I appreciate you for taking the time out of your day to be here with me and share a great conversation that we get to put out in the world. So I, I, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That's that's so kind of you. And um, and it's mutual. Thank you so much. This is This is a great time. I really had a blast. And I'm so glad. <laughs> that we like it it happened <laughs> absolutely yeah um so yeah i i thank you guys for watching the podcast and i will see you guys next time see ya see you guys